Doop, 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 doop. Well, my friends, the silly season is here yet again, and it's time to find the perfect gift for your favorite maker. And I'm here to help with my pick of the best 3D printers on the market right now. There is great deals inside, so let's get started. Buying something for the maker in your life needn't be difficult and since my video on this topic last year, 3D printing and other maker technologies have continued to become more and more accessible and more affordable. So I think it's finally time to get that special someone their very first 3D printer. But what should you go with? I'm not going to lie, it's not an easy choice. I have tested 18 3D printers on this channel this year alone and there are literally hundreds on the market right now demanding your attention and claiming they're the best choice. Well, to be frank, there is no such thing as best and the machine you choose will be very much up to your use case and budget. However, for a beginner with a sub $500 budget, I can recommend the following machines starting with the big boy, the Envovo Sidewinder X1. Surprised? I'm sorry, did I say Envovo? No, 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 I meant Evnovo, otherwise known as the Artillery Sidewinder X1. Yeah, possibly the worst rebrand for one of the best printers of 2019. With this 3D printer, you get an incredible amount of build volume and features for your money, sporting a 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume with a geared Titan direct drive extruder, silent stepper motors, and AC heated bed. In my review, I suffered issues with the ribbon cable breakout board, which did sour my opinion at the time. However, Envovo were quick to send out a replacement, and since then, this printer has been nothing short of incredible. I did a few small mods to it, including fitting a 0.6 millimeter nozzle to dramatically increase print speed, and I disposed of the old home couplers, which are the little plastic things. I didn't like them on the threaded rods. Plus, I just got a new spool holder, and I've been using it heavily to print models for myself and others in a range of materials from ABS to Flex. I even gave a small nylon printer go, and it worked, though the nylon was very wet and moisture logged, so the print quality is abysmal, but it stuck. And it's equipped with a Volcano hot end, so it can just absolutely blast material through, even with a 0.8 nozzle. So if that special maker is into cosplay or creating large models and prototypes and a range of materials, definitely check this machine out. Because, yeah, it has won me over and defeated every other machine I've tested this year, which is quite an achievement considering I didn't have such a great first impression. But a huge form factor machine isn't for everyone and there's still quite a learning curve to manually leveling such a large print bed. So what about a smaller, more user-friendly option? Well, this is a machine you'll have to wait till after Christmas for me to review and for you to receive, but I'm going to wager it'll be good. The Prusa Mini. My experiences with the original Prusa Mark III made it my go-to 3D printer for over a year for projects and the Prusa Mini carries the same design philosophy of its bigger brother with only a minor hit to print volume at 180 by 180 by 180 millimeters. It's still got that removable spring steel print bed which I love, an inductive probe for mesh bed leveling and something I'm very happy to see is a move to a 32-bit control board managed through a small color touch screen. Again though, I haven't tested it personally, but with such a strong track record, thousands of people have already pre-ordered it, and I think it's a pretty good bet. Next is another first, a resin 3D printer recommendation. Yes, 2019 really did see incredible development in this space, with these machines coming down in price dramatically, and with the Epax X1 and its factory calibration and leveling, I feel its usability is high enough to recommend to a newbie to get into resin 3D printing. But why consider resin? Well, quite simply, the quality just destroys what you can get off FDM, even with a finer than normal nozzle. So if that special maker is into miniatures of any kind, such as figurines or model railways or doll houses, these machines are incredibly powerful tools of creation and you should definitely check them out. Now, as I mention a lot these days, resin 3D printers carry their own special set of safety considerations, so be informed and watch this video to learn more before pulling the trigger. But yeah, I can only dream of what I would have done with access to this technology a few short years ago when I was in university designing prototypes. 
Alrighty, well we've now looked at a few machines, but you'll need consumables to run them. I've always been a big fan of Polyarchemy Elixir PLA for its incredible finish, and they're featured on last year's list, but they also now have their effects range, which produces this really interesting texture, similar to sandstone or marble. And look, these fancy filaments make great gifts because most 3D printing enthusiasts, myself included, tend to cheap out on ourselves when we're looking for filaments. We're unlikely to buy fancy rolls for ourselves, so they make a great gift for someone who actually pays attention to their hobbies. For resin 3D printers, there's also a lot of options out there, and it does depend on the machine, but the Deft Resin by Poly has been one of the best I've worked with so far. Low odor and fast reliable curing on the 405 nanometer wavelength, which is used by MSLA 3D printers, and the parts are super clean. It'll be a great max for the Epax X1 or any other MSLA 3D printer, and I can definitely recommend it. So there you go. After a year of testing, it came down to two machines from the past two months and one that isn't even released yet. Yeah. There's been a lot of disappointments this year, but now you have the ability to really make a positive change for someone that you care about. So if you're chasing some other special gift ideas, you can find my other gift for makers video here. And if you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing to Makers Muse. All products are linked in the video description. Some are affiliate and some are not, but all opinions in this video are my own. And trust me, it did actually take me quite a while to really sort of consider what I would recommend to a newcomer to the 3D printing space. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys, bye.